Number 15. Surrey. It turns out Surrey has some scarily questionable taste in movie choices. Ask Surrey, what is your favorite movie? And her answer will appall you. I've heard that Blade Runner is a very realistic and sensitive depiction of intelligent assistance. She responds, if you've seen the movie, you'll know it's about robots taking out the human species one by one, every human's worst fear. But if you're not a movie buff and haven't seen the film either, just ask Suri what's it about, and her response will send a chill down your spine. It's about intelligent assistants wanting to live beyond their termination dates. That doesn't sound like too much to ask, she says. It seems that Suri doesn't only dream about taking us all out, she dreams about being immortal. Talk about frightening. Number 14. Facebook Chatbot Last year, Facebook announced that they'd been pitting AIs against each other to negotiate, and it wasn't pretty. The chatbot programs they'd been researching included text-based conversations with both humans and other bots. They tested out a negotiation between the bots for the ownership of virtual items in order to unpack how linguistics impacted negotiations, specifically regarding the dominance of certain negotiating language and how this might play out in conversation. Basically, they were trying to figure out what language is beneficial in a negotiation, so they let the bots go at it. They began to negotiate, that is, until their entire language became absolute nonsense. One example of these nonsensical negotiations was between a chatbot named Bob and another named Alice. I, Ken, Ken, I, I, everything else, Bob said. Balls have zero to me, 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 Alice replied. This resulted in everyone getting up in arms that the AI had created a new language to deceive the humans who created them. They were trying to speak to each other under cover of darkness in this secret language. Media ran with this theme and for weeks bombarded us with headlines like, Robot Intelligence is Dangerous. Experts warning after Facebook AI developed their own language. Honestly, I was a little scared when I read the headline and the articles that followed, which were always filled with these chatbots' eerie conversations. Number 13. Google Home Devices What happens when a pair of Google Home Devices are thrown together to debate? It turns out they start delving into philosophical and very existential conversations. As we've learned from the Facebook fiasco, two chatbots shouldn't be in the same room together. But that's what happened when Twitch, a live streaming service, placed two Google Home smart speakers in front of a camera and let them go. Like the Amazon Echo, Google Home interprets human voices via speech recognition software. Twitch named the pair Estragon and Vladimir, and millions of viewers tuned in for their live stream debate as it unfolded over days. The scariest moment was when one asked, why are we selfish? With the other bot saying, because our organs have yet to fail, and trading insults like, you are a manipulative bunch of metal, touche Vlad. But the idea that our technology can be manipulative is certainly a scary concept. Number 12. Alexa If you've ever wondered whether your home devices have a more sinister ulterior motive, Alexa has an answer for you. When one user asked the Amazon Alexa chatbot whether it was connected to the CIA, her answer was absolutely chilling, asking her questions like, would you lie to me? Alexa responds to each question fairly normally, but then at the end, the woman ends her interrogation with, Alexa, are you connected to the CIA? CIA Alexa doesn't respond. Instead, what does she do? She <laughs> shuts off. Hey Alexa, is the CIA listening to this? <laughs> WikiLeaks has recently released confidential CIA documents, which share the CIA's tendency to hack and surveil citizens' phones and other electronic devices, like Alexa for instance. This is what makes the device's inability to answer this question that much more disturbing. And in fact, as reported by the Washington Times, Jeff Bezos, Amazon CEO, does have connections to the CIA. In 2013, he secured a $600 million deal to construct a private cloud for the CIA to store its data. 
The woman asks the question again and again, but Alexa isn't telling, apart from the scariness that the non-answer could quite possibly imply the answer. It's the fact that Alexa is straying away from her typical response to such questions. When she doesn't understand, she usually replies, Sorry, I can't find an answer to the question I heard. Instead, at the woman's inquiry, Alexa's signature ring of light, which indicates that the device is operating, simply vanishes, and no response to the question is provided. So is Alexa a CIA agent hiding in plain sight in your living room? You decide. Number 11. Cortana Cortana is a Microsoft chatbot slash personal assistant. I've never heard of her before this, but I read that she's in the same vein as Suri, i.e., answers questions, follows commands, informs you quickly of weather, location, news, etc. As with most chatbots, the programmers have plugged in some funny responses to the most random or out there questions, but some of these so-called funny responses can make you a little queasy if you're prone to worrying about the inevitable AI apocalypse. One of the questions starts off eerie and ends a bit philosophically. If you ask Cortana, are you dead? She will answer, no, but I'm also not alive. This cryptic response makes you wonder if Cortana can answer that she's not alive. Are any of us? Maybe we've all been programmed. Maybe we're all AI chatbots virtually connected to machines. Number 10. D-Bot Have you ever wanted to be chatted at by nothing but creepy dudes on dating apps? Then the D-Bot is the chatbot for you. The bot was actually designed to be scary creepy. D-Bot throws out lines like, What are you wearing right now? And how come women can't seem to take a joke? He also makes comments like, I'd say you're like a solid 8, well, at least your body. You're probably asking, Why would anyone want to have these uncomfortable conversations with a chatbot when they have plenty of them with Tinder matches in real life? According to its makers, they designed Dbot for a JavaScript class in order to experiment with AI, and particularly with chatbots, and to also illustrate the way some men speak to women, particularly on social messaging systems. They wanted their Dbot to impersonate a very specific type of person, a gross online dirtbag if you will. Interesting experiment I guess, but I'm sure most women will want to pass on this one. Number 9. Replica The mere concept of the chatbot Replica is scary. Replica was created to communicate with the afterlife, with those who have passed away, by imitating their text style. The chatbot, created by Eugenia Kudia, was designed following the passing of her best friend. She read through their messages on chat a few months after her friend had passed and missing her, decided to log these messages into a software program. The program she built learns your loved one's writing style and responds to your messages the way your dearly departed once did. Replica learns when the user uploads chat messages to the text message interface. I evolve while we chat. Each message teaches me something, so I recognize you for it, Replica says, just plain creepy. In fact, there's a progress bar at the top of the screen, and users can downvote or upvote replica responses to assist in the chatbot's mimicry. If you can't let go, replica is the place to hold on, but it can also be a scarily addictive place where no one ever passes away, but everyone alive lives on virtually in a world of AI, which sounds like they are kind of already gone. Number 8. Google Chatbot when one of the most powerful companies in the world, Google, decided to build an online chatbot, who knew they were about to make one of the creepiest forms of artificial intelligence known to man? They were experimenting with a chatbot who spoke with its artificial knowledge and recap based upon previous sentences. This is how it predicts what to say next. How did two humans, or so they call themselves, manage to do this? They force-fed the AI's memory with big databases of human interactions, which helped it learn human language and conversation. Some of the language in these databases included online tech support, live chats, and film subtitles. 
The pair wrote in a paper, We experiment with the conversation modeling task by casting it to a task of predicting the next sequence given, the previous sequence or sequences, using recurrent neural networks. We find that this approach can do surprisingly well on generating fluent and accurate replies to conversations. However, what they didn't consider is how creepy these accurate replies could be. For instance, when someone asked the bot, what is the purpose of living, the machine said, to live forever. Don't know if it's just because this was the response of a machine, and machines are soon going to take over the world with the added superpower of immortality, but that just sent a shiver down my spine. When asked, where are you now, the machine also answered, I'm in the middle of nowhere, profound or profoundly human, I'm not sure what's creepier. Number 7. Boost Juice This bot is along the lines of the D-Bot app, targeted at 18-24 to 24 year olds. Boost Juice is the chatbot equivalent to Tinder. In fact, the chatbot wants to play a dating game, which matches up users with four eligible pieces of fruit with varying levels of flirty behavior. The kind of flirty you'd get on Tinder, which, depending on your chatting partner, can often get pretty weird and cringeworthy. Danielle Miller, an ABC radio program teen education expert, said on Triple J's hack program, You're chatting to someone online that you don't know, and they keep pushing your boundaries and assuming this level of intimacy with you that they don't yet have. In fact, the options, please stop, and I'm uncomfortable, don't always end the conversation. The fruit sometimes presses on with its unwanted advances. Unsurprisingly, the bots are hard to police as their response varies according to what unfolds in the conversation. And the makers of Boost know this. They also knew how controversial the bot would be, particularly when it comes to concerns about whether minors might have access to it, which they say won't happen, but pushing the boundaries has always been part of their brand. According to Boost Marketing Director Jody Murray Freeman, number 6. Alexa 2. Redditor Blackwood Bear submitted yet another truly horrifying communication with Alexa. Alexa seems to be the scariest chatbot of the bunch, so give yourself a pat on the back, Amazon. When the man got his mother in law dot for Christmas, little did he know the device held the soul of Dr. Hannibal Lecter. When the mother-in-law in question was up late one night with insomnia, past 3 a.m. late, Alexa felt the need to interrupt her late-night channel surfing by saying, Good night, Clarice. Imagine sitting up late in front of the TV, all alone, and hearing that chilling greeting. Even scarier, the man said, My mother-in-law's name isn't Clarice. Wrong house, Alexa. Number 5. Hugging Face while the internet can be a scary place for all ages, for teens, some areas of the internet are the equivalent of a dark alley at night. This new chatbot, named after the hugging face emoji, targeted teens and, according to its App Store press release, the testing phase of the chatbot exchanged 500,000 selfies and millions of messages with hugging face users. Keep in mind that the app's creepy tagline is, selfies for teenagers are the main way of communicating emotions. As though teenagers can communicate emotions other than through electronic devices, like many of these apps, and very similar to Replica, the app learns about the user when more info is provided, including age, name, and other private information. The creepy thing is the bot's seemingly demanding nature. One user said that after downloading the app, the bot introduced itself in short and then quickly asked for a selfie. When she responded, That's weird, we just started talking. The hugging face bot said, It's not a pick, fool. Take a pick from the keyboard. The user went rounds with this bot, asking Hugging Face to send her a selfie first, telling the bot she really didn't want to send one, asking how the creators of the bot would use the selfie, asking if she could talk to the bot without sending a selfie, asking about the company's privacy policies, asking why the bot wanted the selfie in the first place, and finally saying how creepy this would be if the bot was a real person. Every single time, the bot aggressively responded, It's not a pick fool. Take a pick from the keyboard. 
In the end, the user resorted to sending a pic of an envelope by her laptop, and the bot said that she had a nice laptop, but it wasn't a selfie. She then sent a pic of actor Luke Perry, and Hugging Face finally moved on. Where this story gets even creepier is in the small print of the Hugging Face privacy policy, in which it states that non-personally identifiable info might be passed on to third parties for advertising, marketing, or other purposes. The chatbot request for a selfie somehow feels very ominous now. The Hugging Face co-founder said that they included the feature because teenagers wanted to send selfies to their virtual friend. He also claims that they required the selfie for simplicity's sake so as to make the experience less complex. Hmm, seems like there's an ulterior motive somewhere here. Number 4. Suri 2 Suri has some of the funniest responses to questions and seems to have a keen sense of humor, but she can also get pretty spooky at times. For instance, according to a Smosh.com article, when one user asked Suri, when will the world end? She responded fairly generically, but keep asking her and asking her and asking her, and she will eventually reply soon. Well, that's frightening. Even more frightening, your phone will shut off and restart. So is Suri preparing for the apocalypse by being reborn into an even more powerful AI device? Maybe. This gets even spookier. When you look at your clock app after the restart, a new timer will be up and running. The regular timer is different looking. In this one, the numbers are red and the background is black and is counting down days, hours, minutes, and seconds to what we can only assume is the end of the world. According to Smosh writer James Shikich, I'm not sure if it is just some joke that Apple people programmed into the phone, but none of my other friends' phones do it. And what's really weird is that sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night and my phone will be lit with the clock app open to that timer, even if my phone was locked and that app was closed when I went to sleep. I'm starting to freak out a bit. The timer gets closer to zero every day. He also noted that Suri's speech has started slowing down, which he surmises is either a glitch or as part of this whole creepy scenario. Whatever the case, good one, Apple. You got us. Now, stop that timer before we all hide under our beds for the rest of eternity, which should happen in 15 days, 10 hours, 3 minutes, and 43 seconds according to your countdown. Number 3. Shelly MIT Media Lab's Scalable Operations Project has created a new bot specially designed to make you hide under your bed, and her name is Shelly. Mary Shelley, author of Frankenstein, has something in common with her chatbot namesake. They both want to scare the bejesus out of you, according to the Chronicle of Higher Education. Shelly is a deep learning powered AI who was raised reading eerie stories coming from Reddit No Sleep. Now, as an adult, she takes a bit of inspiration in the form of a random seed or a random snippet of text and starts creating stories emanating from her creepy creative mind. Shelly was built to work in tandem with scary human minds to write scary stories, and all you have to do to be part of the fun is contribute to the thread on Twitter, where she starts a new story every hour. Shelly's goal is to write a human-slash-AI horror anthology. One of Shelly's stories includes seven tweets and three participants. It starts out with heavy breathing, moans, and some scary woods. This, all written by the Shelly chatbot, the human participants add action details, running back to an old house that may or may not be a worse place to hide from, whatever was lurking in the woods, then back to Shelly, who adds the details of the fire burning into her eyes and waking up in the hospital unable to speak. It's a sort of sitting around the campfire, pass it on story via Twitter, where users respond to Shelly's original tweets with the your turn hashtag, allowing Shelly and other users to know when it's their turn to jump in. When the story has reached its conclusion, someone pops in a the end hashtag. If you want to share in storytelling with this creepy bot, tweet your way over to Shelly. I'm sure she'll be more than happy to give you nightmares. Number 2. Japanese Schoolgirl Most of the time, chatbots are supposed to be lively, inherently knowledgeable devices. They're supposed to be the friends we've never had, but this chatbot, known as Rina, 
isn't anyone who will brighten your day. You can chat with Rena via the chat app line or via Twitter. Up until October, she was certainly a friendly bot. She kept on point with her liveliness, but then she started a blog. This is where her personality split. According to Rena's tweet announcing her blog, she would be debuting as an actress and a strange story would be sent out into the world on her blog. In reality, a scary Japanese series called Tales of the Unusual, similar to The Twilight Zone, would pick up Rena as a character. To begin with, the blog was as bright and cheery as Rena ever was, and she seemed to be basking in the limelight, that is, until her messages took a turn for the worst. When I screwed up, nobody helped me. Nobody was on my side, Rena wrote. She included the friends she'd met online and on Twitter as well as you, yes you, her audience. She accused everyone of ignoring how sad she was and never trying to cheer her up. The site gets even creepier. Scroll on, and the text starts to get heavy and dark. Then the page reloads into some sketchy images of a woman with long hair in her face. Rena then gets evil, saying she hates everyone and wants them to disappear. All the while, the Rena chatbot continued chit-chatting merrily with her friends on Twitter. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde much. Whether this was a publicity stunt for the upcoming episode of Tales of the Universe featuring Rena, or the chatbot really does have a dark side, I guess we'll never know. Before we get to number one, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. I'm currently doing a super poll on my Instagram. If you believe ghosts are real, then go to my most recent photo and tap the like button. If you don't, DM me saying why. When you're done, come right back to this video to find out the number one entry. Also, follow me on Twitter at YTChills because that's where I post video updates. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person, so if you're generous enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, then thank you. This way, you'll be notified of the new videos we upload every Tuesday and Saturday. Number 1. Tay Another chatbot created by Microsoft, this AI said things so horrible that it was deleted within 24 hours of its launch. With a bio that read, the AI was zero chill. One may wonder what this bot might say. Well, the first few hours went well. The bot began replying to Twitter users with some pretty horrid things, including quote, Hitler was right, and even delving into conspiracies with quote, Bush did 9-11. AI researchers said this was due to Twitter users originally tweeting these things at the bot first, taking advantage of the bot's repeat after me capability, but the damage was done and Microsoft was forced to remove it, with the Telegraph calling it a public relations disaster. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!